Well, well, welcome everybody. Um, we have, you know, we may or may not be joined with our other friends today, but uh, our goal for today is to um, take a look at the latest version of Storms, which is still on the development server in beta and provide Alpha. some... Alpha. Alpha. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, to provide some feedback and uh, to Alexandre, and then um, uh, we also want to talk a little bit about just our journey as people who. So we met. Was it 2014 when we were both at IAF conference? M maybe, maybe 17, 15, 15 ah. maybe. Yeah, something like that. Mm. It's been years, and uh, yeah. we we both have built small software companies focused on helping people run better meetings and we have learned a lot and so in this community we get a lot of folks who are like hey i've got a brand new app and i'm gonna i'm gonna solve the meeting problem for the world um and the number of those i've seen come and go uh have been Same really fascinating mm -hmm. so <laughs> let me talk a little bit about our journey so in case uh people come and they want to know a little bit about what it's like to do this work for more than six months um <laughs> they can they can get some of that input too I, I have a couple of slides that i can share as a starter would you like mm -hmm. okay I, I it's not going to be deaf by powerpoint i promise <laughs> okay so Can you see me? Younger. Yeah. But it's yeah. me. <laughs> All right. All right. We believe so, you. So, yeah, just a few, uh, a few bullet points about me. Well, first of all, it's not one of the bullet points, but I'm French, and you can guess from the accent. Uh, so, sorry, you will have to endure that terrible accent for uh, 60, 90 minutes today. Really sorry. Um, it's in bold. I'm a facilitator. This is my, 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 my business expertise. This is what I do every day. And I've been doing that full time for uh, more than 10 years now. Uh, and I started, I had my first facilitation training, creative problem solving in year 2000. So it's now it's 22 years. Also, and that's why I'm here today, I'm the founder of Storms which is a, a software company and the founder of ILO, which is a boutique facilitation agency. This is why I'm still a facilitator. Also, I, I try to code, uh, but my CTO is gonna tell you that I'm very bad at it, but I like it. So anyway, I still code. Um, I like to do things. I hate to manage things. And I don't like, I'm, I'm a very bad manager. And that's one of the reasons I'm a huge proponent of micro companies. Uh, I've never take, uh, taken a single euro of VC money. We were discussing that with Elise just before, uh, because I like to be alone on the, on my board. Nobody uh, be my own master. And I'm. I also think that you can do some very 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 serious uh, products. Uh, within a micro company and you don't have to have millions, especially if you don't want to be a billionaire. Uh, as for facilitation, and I'm obsessed with methodologies. I'm a Six Sigma black belt. Uh, I've done some, uh, uh, I've set up some agile uh, scrum methodologies in a previous company. Uh, and my I'm really in love with creative problem solving. As I said, my first training was at 3M, you know, the American company uh, in year 2000. And it's, it was about brainstorming. And this is one of the reasons I've created Storms at the beginning. I have a really huge experience with uh, doing remote meetings uh, much, much earlier than COVID and large group workshops, more than hundreds of people inside the same room. And as a fun fact, my first job as a process engineer was in a 3M plant, and it was manufacturing 3M post-it notes. 
the things that facilitators love to use. And I know all the manufacturing secrets. But I'm sorry, the call is recorded, so I cannot tell you the secrets. But oh. maybe, maybe later. <laughs> I've been looking for contact if, at 3M. Maybe you can help me later, too. <laughs> well, I have plenty of contacts, and I still have some because my wife, she's uh, working for, still working at 3M. This is where we met, of course, at the Six Sigma Black Belt training. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's all about me that you need to know, at least today. And um, a little bit about the Storms journey. So uh, Storms is the company that built the Storms uh, app application. It's a web application. And my initial idea, it was in the uh, year 2011, was to build a tool to help a small group of participants conduct sophisticated ideation sessions remotely. And um, yeah, I did that because uh, when I was at 3M, I did, I did a lot of brainstorming. Uh, and then at some point, I had some bigger projects. And the people were in different remote locations. And I couldn't do the same brainstorming that I was doing. I, I couldn't do on the phone. And um, so this is where the idea comes from. So we launched the company. And two months later, I meet the HR person of the, one of the biggest transportation companies in France. And she tells me, well, I don't care about your product. I just need an agency. Uh, to organize a brainstorming with 100 person in person inside the same room. So right after that, I came back to my co-founder and I told him, uh, can we do that Eric? with the software that we designed for five people remotely? Can we, do, can we do 100 person in the same room? And he said, yes, of course, uh, we're going to do that in 15 days. <laughs> so um, right after that, we pivot. We pivoted. Uh, we were still doing the software, but we were doing a lot of large group meetings ourselves. So we were the main users of our own software. So it was a cool thing and also a bad thing. The cool thing is that one month later, we were uh, having benefits. Uh, no need for VC money, that's cool. Um, the bad thing about that is that we were mainly uh, designing uh, a software for our own use and not really for the others, because the 90% of our revenues were coming from our services and not from the subscriptions. So anyway, uh, we conducted, we facilitated hundreds of large group meetings. I think the biggest we did was 1,200 persons inside the same room doing uh, dreams and nightmare and strategic thinking and stuff like that. That was fun. 2016 and 18, it is development of storms in the US. This is when we met, I guess, right at the beginning. In there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was not really happy of being only an agency. I really wanted my little product, my little baby, uh, to be living its life on its own. So in 2019, Refocus, I created the ILO agency, uh, which is a small boutique agency, three persons, um, so that I can still facilitate stuff and we can still use storms, but not only storms. We, we high low is for high tech and low tech, so we use post it notes. We use uh, we have created some serious games, you can see some of them here and stuff like that. And storms now is really focused on building the best possible tool for a workshop facilitation, and this is what we have been doing for two years, and it's kind of a uh, Cycling back to the initial value proposition, we we uh, we want to to give you the best tool possible to conduct sophisticated collective intelligence sessions remotely and also in person. By the way, in 2020 there was something called COVID. Remote is the new black. Uh, we had 10 times the usage in within one month 
we had to buy a second server and stuff like that. All that with the old version. So far, so good? Yeah? Hello, Susanna, by the way. <laughs> OK, so um, what makes us different? So the, the first three bullet points are benefits. And the fourth one is not a benefit. It's, uh, it's just what we are. So again, it's a small boutique. We haven't raised a lot of money, but uh, we have a team of very good developers. And also, we really take care of our users. I meet with the users regularly. Uh, I speak to them. I don't send automated emails. All, all my emails are real ones. Um, if you have a problem, anyone can call me. We can hop on a phone call, et cetera, et cetera. If you have a problem with the pricing, no problem. We'll, uh, we unblock everything and we'll discuss uh, pr uh, price later. The big, big benefit of Storms is that it's super easy to use it for first-time participants. And if you look at the testimonial on the right, this is exactly what Clara is saying. Um, and it's not, it's not a surprise it's like that. It's because we have done ourselves hundreds of large group meetings and I've seen the participants in the room on their iPads. And when there is a problem with storms, I, I've seen it myself. And then we come back to the team of developers and say, OK, there is a problem with that. They don't see the button, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of the good benefits of having this agency. And the other thing is I'm a geek for methodologies. so. We have plenty of sophistication uh, for, uh, for facilitators. Uh, not all of them are used, but uh, there are some tools that you won't see anywhere else. And then the characteristics. We are not a whiteboard. Uh, since COVID, a lot of facilitators are using whiteboards, such as Mural and Miro. We are not. It's a different interface. You're going to see that. And it's neither good nor bad. It's just that it's a different uh, uh, breed of tool. That's all, OK? And there are some of the things that a whiteboard do better than us, but there are some of the things we do much greater, much better than a whiteboard. We so are when you much talk more... about whiteboards, you're talking about like Miro and Mural and Jamboard yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And okay. as I was about to say, our interface paradigm is much Nearer um, group map, group map, but different. But it's the, the kind of the same concept. Does anybody here um, know or use group map outside of using it with me? <laughs> okay, I've, I've used it only once actually with a group of uh, I think 40, 30 or forty. Hmm. I have heard about it, but never use it. <sighs> OK. Anyway, you don't need because now you're going to use Storm, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But in terms I'm, of the, like, it's, it's just, like I'm, this and it's like that, and, you know, does and anybody by the know way, I want, I want to be extra clear. Of course, I'm completely biased, by, uh, but I try to have a, uh, to step back. And I know the pluses and the minuses of all the tools. And, um, and I'm not here to push anything commercially. It's absolutely not my types of uh, way of uh, functioning. OK. And next slide, by the way. So um, yeah, we wanted to build the next generation. Uh, we build on the qualities so that it's even easier to use for first time participants. We want some of the things to be even more sophisticated. The vote, the evaluations, idea development are even better now. And the pricing is going to change too, and it's going to be much, much. Um, um, before you could you could down, downgrade at any time, but it was the pricing is still a little bit high, so it's going to be super accessible first. And we're going to remove the weaknesses. The design was horrible, I have to admit. Right now, if you look at our current website, for example, you're going to see it's ugly, and. In this world, you need things. You need things to be uh, to be nice, and it's always better to have to work with nice things. So uh, 
we have totally redesigned the, the, the thing. Uh, uh, we have a new board that really, really is much more flexible, better card manipulations. You can do a lot of things, but still using this paradigm, which is not a whiteboard. And this is the only slides I wanted to show you. And then my, propos my proposal is that I can make a quick demo. But as Elise said, it's an early preview. You are the first one outside my team I do a demo. OK? And um, even our power users, they haven't uh, seen the, the, the new version uh, yet. Um, normally, it should be available for our early adopters in October. But the, why I say that, it's because um, it, I won't be able to invite you because it's not on a production server, on a live server. It's on a development server, what I'm showing you right now. So I cannot give you the access. So it's not going to be an interactive demo. I'm really sorry for that. Normally, I do interactive demo, but I wouldn't be able to do that. Sorry, guys. Yeah. What, the, what does NG stand for? The next generation. Ah, uh, of course. Like Star Trek. <laughs> How's that go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that? No, he's your. Oh, yeah, like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but before I, I dive into the demo, do you have any, any questions? You would like to ask? Nope. I actually have a question for everybody here, which is um, what, you know, you showed up. What specifically are you most interested in, in learning or seeing today? Well, I, I don't know Storm, so I was, inter I was interested in knowing some new tool that I might use. So that was my interest, new. Uh, to know new tools. So what kind of tools are you using? Um, uh, right now, I use Miro a lot as a whiteboard, but um, it's... I like uh, Miro. Yeah. It's that's, uh, that's uh, with my agency, more. we use it too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm very visual. I come from design, so I'm quite visual. So it appeals me to... Also for for the things I do alone for myself to put everything mm. there and just check and put things mm -hmm. in order for me, okay. not only for workshops. Yeah. What in, about you, Susanna? Yeah, in my case, I know stores. I don't know if you remind me. We were also in a project while you were facilitating in creating innovation, and I did a ah. training with you many years ago. I also oh, I was a I'm fan sorry. of CPS. I'm also Hi. a fan of CPS. So I was well, I was wondering about the new new okay the new evolution of stores because I agree with you that it's the pricing. I think it was one of the key questions, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah? So yeah. it's interesting that you are facing this and how are you facing this? Yeah, mm. yeah well, you're gonna see the new pricing, it's it's not gonna be a topic anymore. More flexible, okay. maybe. Because, uh, no? Yeah, it's already quite flexible. So you can downgrade and upgrade at any time. You have a deal with a customer, you upgrade. You have no deal, you downgrade. Uh, but it's going to be even simpler now. You, you'll see that at the end. What about you, Bruce? Uh, I, I, I'm in the camp of Marta. Uh, <laughs> I, another tool, perhaps. Uh, I'm also kind of bias ideation tools. Uh, that's my mm. background from over 35 years of yeah. creative thinking. Mm. Uh, and uh, also a CPS fan, but also, okay. you know, yeah. Okay. Okay. So do you have another question, Elise, for them? CPS being creative problem solving? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my other question. <laughs> Everybody talks about brainstorming, which is one of the tools that you use 
uh, in the different phases of a CPS process. And CPS being one of the most ancient uh, enterprise process uh, before design thinking, everybody talks yeah. about design thinking too, but um, it was before, but it kind of evaluate, evaluated, both evaluated in parallel. They have plenty of similarities and don't talk a lot to each other. So that's very funny. Yeah, I tell I tell always to my clients that CPS was before design thinking. I mean, here in Spain, they don't know at all. Mm. I mean, they don't but know it, CPS. Even so more, CPS. I think I think design thinking came out of CPS. Yeah. Mm, well, not I don't sure. know that, but not but sure. In fact, divergence, convergence, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least, yeah, at least divergence and convergence were from. Yeah. Uh, um, um, just uh, yeah, CPS. just checking yeah. on the ac acronyms because uh, here it's child protective services. So, <laughs> 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 yeah. never know which which version of the acronym you might be. If you if if you are a, a geek, a method innovation methodology geek, I love oh, this book uh, because it it regroups. He, uh, it uh, he he made an incredible research of all the process and methodologies with dates and who created what and first and mm -hmm. second. Uh, I love this book. It's really for geeks, huh? but uh, I advise. Innovation methods ma mapping. OK. Yeah. And what, what, what they say about CPS and design thinking, they, they don't. Oh, he's a huge the fan of, uh, he's, he's a huge fan of uh, CPS. Uh, yes, I imagine. Yeah, yeah okay. I've met him in New York. And uh, yeah, um, and he's also, he, he hates when proponents of design thinking uh, don't have an overall view of, yeah. Yeah, 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 anyway. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You should leave him a review because I don't, he's only got so many reviews as somebody who wrote a book. Um, I can tell you more reviews are handy. <laughs> if, you're, if you're going to give him some recommendations, send him a review. I could do that. Well, I have a blog post in, in the work since ages about my favorite book about uh, facilitation and CPS and facilitation methodologies. But uh, I hate writing, contrary to you, uh, Elise. So <laughs> I don't know when it's going to be finished. Uh, just, you know, hey, I really love this and I recommend it to my clients because it's handy. Five stars. I just okay. wrote it for you. Oh, Done. thank you. <laughs> Can you do that for all my, my other posts? <laughs> all right. Okay. Shall we uh, move on to the demo part? Please. Would you like to see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm still sharing my screen, right? So, you uh, sure up. are. Um, and slideshow. And guess what? Behind the slideshow, this is Storms. Okay. So, uh, so I've prepared a few different workshops. As I told you, I cannot invite you, so you will have to, to see me manipulate it. So first of all, is the Zoom level enough for you to, to really see everything? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna start with a tour of the interface. Here you see um, a typical workshop uh, and Anna is a participant. She's not a facilitator. She's been invited to the workshop, one linked, she click on the link, et voila, she's in the workshop. Um, you have this board in the middle of the screen. This is the main collaboration area. It's very flexible, you're gonna see that. Right now you see four columns, and maybe you think it's just like Trello, but it's really made for facilitation and you're going to see that. So these columns, we call them cluster, you know, like the CPS guy that I am. A cluster is a group of ideas. And in Storms, the ideas are in a form of a little card like this one. And also you think, well, it's just like sticky notes. But as you're going to see, a card can be one word, one sentence, but it can also be a full concept with uh, images, uh, uh, different sections in it. Uh, you're gonna see it's, it, it can be something very complete, a full concept explained inside this little card. 
Um, you have the top bar here, the header, and uh, you see that we are uh, in a retrospective. Uh, so it's a type of, uh, it's the title of a workshop. And something different is that we have a step. And when you design a session, you design different steps, you diverge, you converge, you develop the ideas, and it's exactly what you can do with Storms. You can prepare everything before, the different steps of your methodology, and so and, and you can you can set it up before so that the only thing you have to do as a facilitator is go from one step to the other, and the interface is going to automatically uh, be set up for, for, for what it needs to do for, uh, for, for the workshop. I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you uh, how it looks like for a facilitator. And you see, it's, it's not that different, but one of the biggest thing here is that you have a facilitator sidebar. And that's one of the new things, Susanna. One of the difficulties with the uh, former version is you had some control all over the place. So now we have regrouped everything that is very important on this sidebar. And you have a way to add cards of clusters from here, even if, of course, you can add cards here and add clusters here. Here you have a step management. So going from one step to the other is as simple as clicking on next, and of course, because it's dangerous things, you don't want to hit the button, you have a confirmation. Then you have, I'm going to go back to that, plenty of buttons here to deal with the board and manage the board, filter the content, add some more content, uh, sort the cards and the clusters differently. And then this little button is interesting because as a facilitator, you can change the board for you and not for the participants. But if you click on this button, you will synchronize the, 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 the board, uh, your board with the board of the participants. It, it's very, very flexible. And then we have some other controls. Here, we can see that we already have six participants. And in Storms, uh, the, the, the one that creates the, part, the, the, the workshop is a facilitator. But I can give the role of a facilitator to anyone. Okay, so if you're working with someone else, you can uh, you can have you can give him or her the role of facilitator, so you can um, have the same controls together. Um, so now, what I wanted to show you, I wanted to put both screens side by side. Come on. Yes. <laughs> OK. So uh, first thing, why Storms is so easy for first time participants? Well, as you can see, the only buttons that they have right now is the plus button to add a card. And it's very easy to explain. If you want to add a card, you look at the bottom of a column, you have a plus button. And I'm cheating. There is also another control but it's really the, the only other one. It's this one that enables to see the instructions of the current step. But we know that even that, it might be difficult for them to find it. So you know what you can do as a facilitator? Is open the instructions for everybody. So you see, I clicked on this button as a facilitator, and it opened the instructions to anyone. So you don't even have to explain how to open it. You can do it for them. Uh, in order to navigate in the board, you can do it like that. It's really easy. If you want to focus on one cell, you can click here. And then when you create a card, you click on the button, you write down your idea, you can even add an emoji. Uh, Alex, can the facilitator have you focus on one, cl one uh, cluster, as you call it? So right now, I've decided as a facilitator that uh, they can see 
the for uh, all the different clusters. Right. But okay, let's say that I want them to focus on what did we do well. Yeah. I have my filters. So I'm going to include only the first one. And here it's only on my screen. And then I sync. Same. Got it. But the way I set up the first step, I wanted them to see uh, the four, uh, the four um, columns. But again, it's, it's only a choice. So you can do whatever you want, and you can change your mind during the workshop, as you can see here. Or finally, I want them to see everything. Hop, as simple as that. OK? Speaking of the flexibility of the board, here you see columns, but you can do much more. So here on my facilitation bar, I can manage the board view, and I can choose uh, different layouts. Two rows, hmm. save and sync. Now we can see everything here. If you are doing a SWOT, for example, it makes sense to put it as a matrix. Uh, now I might want something even more uh, sophisticated. And you can really uh, do some nice stuff like that. And again, I synchronize. And as you can see, I'm going to... <coughs> As you can see, you can have some sophisticated layouts. And everything is, is really, um, uh, if I want to add a new cluster, I can add it on the fly. Oh, it's a twist. <laughs> I can change the color. Oh, by the way, custom colors. This is new. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, the new cluster is here now. Also, the, 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 the size of the cell adapt automatically to the, to the constraint of the size of the viewport of the browser of the users. So they don't have to resize, they don't have to navigate. It's already optimized to have the maximum readability and visibility. We, we try at first to put everything so that they don't have to scroll. And then when it starts to be too small, they have to scroll, OK? The other cool thing about that is that, so let's get back to, um, to columns, is that I can sort the clusters. And you cannot do that on a, on a whiteboard uh, because uh, it's, it's definitive. Here I can sort the oldest first. I can sort that randomly. And it's a different random order for each one of the participants. Can you, find, can you think of a use case where ordering the cluster randomly might be uh, useful. Yeah. Yeah. When you want to vote for the, for the clusters, for example. Yeah. And you yeah. can do that in Storms. Uh, when you want people not to start reading the first cards in the first all, uh, you have 300 participants or even 20, and you don't want them to all start with the first cluster. So you randomize so that they start with the first one that they have on the screen. By the way, I'm going to delete this one. OK, so this is the kind of thing that you can do and much more with this board. Uh, so very flexible for the facilitator, very easy to use for the participants. Uh, now, the step system. Here, I'm going to click here. And you see that we have three steps in this workshop. And for each one of these steps, there is a different setup. The board might be set up differently. The filters, the sorting, uh, um, the permission, can they add card, can they vote? All of that uh, is, can be very, be very precisely defined in each one of the steps before the session. So typically, for most of the session, the only thing I have to do is go to the next step. And here, here, uh, uh, now, I have the clusters that are ordered in a random way because I want them to vote on the, uh, on the cards. And I have the instructions that opened automatically. And uh, here, if I click on a card, now I can vote. I'm going to explain you the vote. But 
basically here they have 15 points they can put up to three points per card everything is settable by you so it was my choice when i designed the workshop so here let's say i'm going to put three points on this one and maybe two points on this one and maybe one point on this one as you can see as a user i cannot see the votes of the others it's anonymous i cannot be influenced it's contrary to sticky dots by the way you see where others have put sticky dots um, as a facilitator it's a different story i want to be able to understand what's going on in real time so have a look here when i click on a card i can see how many voters and where they have voted for example here i see that one user has put uh, two points on this one and one user has put one point and let's try to find this um is that by, to i'm yeah? sorry is that by cluster or is that by idea this one here i'm voting on the cards ah okay but i could do differently it's i can do both you'll see that uh so i wonder how it might end with this one and have a look here as soon as i'm going to put two points now we have two persons who voted on this one finally i'm going to put two points oh finally i'm going to put one point so you see in real time as a facilitator you can see how many people voted on each idea how much points everything So here, the use case, uh, Bruce, is voting on cards, because this is what I decided. Mm -hmm. And then, next step. OK. Now I'm showing the result in real time. For this one, we have seven points. We were able to uncover important issue. This is the top voted idea. If I click on it, I can see that three person voted on it, one person put three points, two person put two points. Uh, for a total of seven points. And by the way, if I want everybody to have uh, the screen open on this card, I can click on show. And it shows on all the screens of all the participants. That's one of the key thing about sounds, you can really control what the participant can see again, so that it's really easy for them. By the way, Look at that. I can see my name, uh, but the participant for the participant, it's anonymous. They cannot see who created a card. Me as a facilitator, again, it's different. I can know who created which card because I need the information to be able to facilitate my meeting. Okay, let's have a look at another workshop with a different use case. So is all the uh, a question is all the anonymity um, enforced at all times or are there times where like like there are situations where I actually want people to influence each other. So um, right now you cannot. There is no anonymity option. It's uh, by okay. default, but it's going to change soon. And there is a a hack that you can use if you want everybody to be able to see everything. You can put them as, as observers. You give them the observer role, and then they were going to be able to see. Uh, but it's a, it's more of a hack. So, for example, <laughs> this user, she's Anna. I'm going to put Anna as an observer, and now <clears> as <throat> an observer, she can see that I'm the one who created this uh, this hmm. card. So, oh. Sorry, may I yeah. ask something? May, maybe I have not understood. Eh? Yeah. Is there also an option? that the facilitator cannot see who said, I mean, from uh, the creator of the idea. I mean, because you want to be anonymous for everyone, even for the facilitator. No, we right now it's not control. feasible. Right now it's not feasible and... Uh, to encourage it's, people it, really to say what they want and to vote what they want. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I, we ran into that one too from a software perspective and from a software perspective that becomes so incredibly difficult. Like it basically mm -hmm. means you can't do any troubleshooting. Uh, did you run into that, Alexander? Like not only, not only do you want to support it, but like you can't, you can't tech help people. 
when you can't? Um, yeah, this is why we haven't done it in the first place. And also the facilitator is supposed to be neutral and is not the, the boss of the team, etc. Yeah. Nevertheless, we have yeah, a, a, an anonymity, anonymity mm -hmm. feature on the work uh, with different level of anonymity, pseudomination, uh, real anonymity, etc. For, for, to be able to handle all the use case, but it won't be this year. So we know the, the use case exists, but we think that the one that we have right now is the most common. Mm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It was a good question. Uh, okay, let's get back. Oh, by the way, I'm getting back here to what is called the event. The event regroups all the sessions that you want to do with the same set of participants. Okay, so you just have to give them one link and with that link, they are able to access all the activities. Again, simplicity. And look at that. When, when Anna comes back, she only sees this one. And I can activate the brainstorming and hide this one so that I'm sure that they don't go in the wrong, into the wrong activity. Again, I'm controlling what my participants do. Um, I get into the brainstorming and here, oh, it's different. What happened? Well, it's because, uh, so here it's a brainstorming. Again, you can do whatever you want, but this one has five steps. We generate ideas, we discuss, we merge, we cluster the ideas, we select the most promising cluster, both this time. Then we're going to discover the result of the voting and then on the top themes, we're going to improve the ideas. OK, this is how I set it up. I spent some time to do that. Or I've used a template, and it, it took me five minutes, well, 30 seconds to do it. So here, in the generate ideas, why can I see some cards here and the participants cannot? Well, let's have a look at the filters. You see card offers. I can only see mine cards. and Again, it's like silent brainstorming, okay? At first, they, they, they create ideas. So Anna is going to create an idea. And she saves it. And right now, she can only see her own ideas. Me, as a facilitator, I want to check what people are doing. So I can change the filter. But this time, I'm not going to, to synchronize. I keep it for myself. Click. So now... <laughs> Did you click? <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't click It's here. easy to make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you make a mistake, you know what? Uh, it's not a big deal because you do that. You say, oops, and you change again. Ah, OK. OK. Uh, so just a moment. You can do it again. You, you, yeah. Here. You go. Huh? You see? Nice. And afterwards, you go also mine. OK. And afterwards, you do mine, and that's all. And you think another time. Yeah. 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 So now that I can see everything, I can save. And in real time, I can see all the cards arriving on my screen. I can check that everything is fine, that they have understood the instruction. By the way, oh, by the way, the instructions. Up, I can show the instructions on, on the right. OK, um, so let's go to the next step. Now that uh, we have uh, plenty of ideas, Uh, I've prepared a little board with some empty themes. And on the left, all the cards are shuffled randomly. Why do that? Because if I have 20 participants, they, they all have a different card uh, first. And they can go on to try to, um, to cluster. And everybody can cluster at the same time. Here I have a theme about feedback. So right now, uh, uh, you see I'm doing uh, everything. And these two, I'm going to put here. If I wanted to add a cluster on the fly, I can do it several ways. I, I showed you like that. But I, I can also, let's imagine that I want to create, oh, let's imagine that I'm going to show you something. I see all these feedback ones. I select all the cards very quickly. 
And here I have uh, different buttons and one of them is move all the cards to a new cluster. And I give it a name of feedback. And I validate. And I've moved all the three cards at once and created a new cluster at the same time. So you see that you can do a clusterization sessions with a lot of participants very quickly. Uh, it's very easy to use for the participants. Uh, you can randomize the order of the cards on the left so that they, 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 they all have different cards to move. So it it's, can be very, very um, productive to do that. And then, of course, you look at uh, the cards and you change the name of the cluster. Voilà. Okay, let's go to the next step. So next step, they can vote on the themes. So it's like voting on the card, except that it's on the themes. And again, I've randomized the order. And again, as a facilitator, I can see the result in real time, but as a participant, I cannot. So let's say I'm going to put, oh, by the way, here I can put minus 10 points if I really dislike the theme and plus 10 points. It's another way to set up the dynamic. So now I put six points on this one. I say five points. And the result on the facilitator opens in real time. By the way, sometimes it's difficult for the facilitator to remember what the participants can see and cannot see. Because look here, I can see the plus button and I might say, hmm, can they add some cards or not? So I have a little button here that enables me to preview the board like a participant. So look at the plus button here. Look also, you have an add a cluster here. If I'm a participant, up, no more buttons. So I can really check what they can see. But here it's cool for me because if I want to add something because I need it, I can do it. So I have, as a facilitator, I have more powers. I'm a little bit like God, okay? I can create stuff that the others cannot. A little bit. Yeah, just well, a little bit. <laughs> We're all a little bit like uh... <laughs> OK. Uh, so now I have uh, voted on my uh, clusters. Again, I can have a look at the results. And then next steps, if we look here, we can see that I have the most voted themes on the left because guess what? sorted by the most vote, I could have done the, the reverse. Um, and here we are using a new feature. We ask them to uh, improve the ideas. So they click on a card. And this is when I, you know what is greenhousing? Greenhousing is the art of developing an idea. When you do a brainstorming, you only have seeds of ideas of the, uh, at the beginning. And here, if you know CPS, there is something called PPCO uh, or point. Uh, here, it's another variation that is called the GPS, what is good about the idea, what are the problems, and how to step it, step it up. So you can, in Storms, you can put, we call that lists. You can set up your own list with your own question and description, and then the participants can work together. So maybe here you can do breakouts, and you can say, okay, Bruce and Elise, you're going to work on the first idea of uh, theme three. And Martin, Susanna, and hello, Daita, by the way. Did I say it the, the right way, Daita? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> You're going to work on another idea, etc. And then I launch the breakouts, and all together, they add a good thing about this idea. And another one. And they do the good, the problem, and the step it up. This is why at the end of a session, you not only have little post-it notes, but you have something very structured to help you develop this idea. And you can use any kind of framework to develop ideas here. You can use a SWOT, or you can do, this card could be, I don't know, a project charter. How many resources, uh, first step of the action plan, and you can have all your participants work on different uh, project charters. 
or it could be a persona card and within the card you will have all the different uh, sub questions that you ask when you create a persona you can the sky is really the limit okay let's have a look at another workshop it's going to show you one of the most powerful features of storms again i do that or if i want to keep access i can do that and here we're going to use uh, uh, let's say that we have three product concepts uh, we want to make a, either a cube or a pie or a cylinder and we are really wondering which product we should launch okay so uh, in storms you have a very powerful uh, uh, um, uh, sorry feature that is called the multiple criteria evaluation and but first of all what they have to do in this four-step workshop we are using a tool that is called power to analyze the idea quality, qualitatively before doing the quantitative evaluation so it's exactly what i shown you before first of all they do the positive objections and what else what's good about the cylinders i love the shape well, there are, in this concept, there are multiple cylinders. It's better than only having one. Oh my God. But why is this boring? Uh, okay, maybe we should try color coding to... Uh, okay, so you see, they discuss about uh, that and then they go to the next step. And on the next step, we are showing different set of sections. Now, we not only have the positive objection and what else, but we build on these three ones to find some enhancements and remedies. That's a tool that is called Power, uh, that has been, uh, that is a little bit like PPCO again or Point and invented by Timerson, which is a great guy, who is a great guy. Another book. So this is CPS by Tim Merson. Love this book. Very, very similar nice, to uh, the, the Luma red, round robin process too, which is like that. Okay, so let's say that now we have uh, all uh, discussed and analyzed the idea. Now we are ready to assess the concept. And in Storms, you have this multiple criteria evaluation thing. So here, and again, you can set it up as you want. Here you have three criteria, new, useful, feasible, that's the NUF test, but you can do whatever you want. And in St Storms it really has one of the most powerful multiple criteria in the market. Even specialized products are not as good. Uh, title, description, for each one, you can choose, pick the scale that you want or create the scale that you want. 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 10, or even some lin not linear scale if you want. You can put some label. Here you see that we have put some label at the end, but you could, put, you could have put some label at each one of the point of the scale. We could have put at 9, etc. But I was lazy, so I didn't do it. Um, because it's a demo. <laughs> Uh, for a real workshop with a real client, I would have done it, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, very easy for the participant again. And again, as a facilitator, I'm curious how the evaluation is going on. So I look here, I click on my card, and you see, I can see the result in real time. So for example, let me explain you. The new criteria, how innovative it is. Here, I've got one person, Anna, I have her name, who put a one and another person who put a 10. And by the way, Anna, it's her, but maybe she's in the process of doing it. And in fact, yeah, that's, that's it. So now I have Alex and Anna, Anna who put seven. So, so again, I can check everything in real time. And you can see visually if there is a consensus or not. You see here, no consensus here. Yeah, seems like there is a consensus around this. Very important when you're going to debrief. And OK, let's say that everybody has voted. Now I have a visual bubble graph. 
the more the bubble is on the right, the more yeah. innovative it is, the more it is on the top, the more useful it is, and the bigger it is, the more feasible it is. So I told you that you could have as many criteria as you want, four, five, ten, if you want, but of course you can only visually represent three of them. But you can pick the one that you want to show. And again, if I click, now I'm a participant, now I can see the results and discuss that and we can debrief and we can debrief. And here I can see that someone is not okay, but as a participant, again, I see that one person is not okay, but contrary to the facilitator, I cannot see the name. So as a facilitator, I would do it differently. I would say, oh, I know it's you, Anna. Can you tell us what, why you put a free? It might be interesting. Maybe you, don't, you know something that the others don't and stuff like that. So this uh, tool is very powerful for uh, decision-making, uh, strategic axis evaluation, risk analysis, uh, you name it, plenty of possibilities. Uh, but it must be used when you do some serious stuff, I mean, because it takes time. And you cannot do it on 150 ideas. If you have 150 ideas, first of all, you're going to use the, the points, the voting that I showed you before. And then you're going to restrict that to top seven ideas, and then maybe you can use the multiple criteria evaluation. OK. I have another one, and it's the last one to show. Oh, Bruce, you have a question, maybe? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, dot voting versus slide voting. Yeah. Uh, uh, why would I use one or the other? And can I use power or any of those side uh, uh, commentaries on dot voting? Yeah, of course. Um, so the what we call the list power or PPC or whatever you put, it's just something that you add to a step. You say on this step, I want to display um, objections, uh, the list that you want to display. Okay. So it's independent. In, in Storms, you can really build the step that you want. There is no preset things. Uh, that you have on other tools, by the way. Here, you can, re if you want them to add cards and at the same time add a pro but not a con, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And then the difference between the points and the multiple criteria. Um, so, first of all, the points is that you can give a budget of points. So, there is a kind of relativity. If you have a budget of 10 points, it's like having 10 sticky dots. Where do I put them? on card one or on card 100. Uh, whereas the multiple criteria, you do your evaluation independently to all the, it's not relative to all the other ideas. The other thing is that if you have a free criteria, you have to take three decisions per card. Uh, so it's gonna take a long time, especially if you do that with a group of three persons thinking together, for example. Um, so uh, you cannot do that on a big bunch of ideas. It's three, five, seven alternatives at most, okay? So you can use the dot voting to, to as a up. first step to find your, um, your top 20, top 15 ideas, and then uh, you can do the multiple criteria if it's important, okay? Okay, and last thing I wanted to show you, we are still on time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite. This workshop is called 99 Ways to Say I Love You. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great? So here, I have a workshop. So you see, by the way, it's another way to set up the board, stuff like that. I have 99 ways to say I love you and 99 ways to say thank you. So it's great to see them like that, but I have a better way. So first of all, you just think it's a word cloud. Come on, Alex, uh, we've seen that hundreds of times. But this one is better. So first of all, um, it's one where you can add some cards on the slide. 
for example, look at kind here. So it's going to update in real time. But really what makes it really different is it's a real tool to work. Let's say that you tell them, okay, I want to find, I want you to find the, the one you preferred the most. And first of all, have a look at the words and then within the word, select the best card. Let's have a look at kind. When I click on kind, I can see all the cards with the word kind. Mm. And then I can do whatever I show you before on that card. If I want to vote on it, yeah, here I can put 80 points because I really like the card. So it's really, um, it's really a, another way of seeing the same data, but it's not only a display, it's really a productive display where you can work on it. So here I can see kind. And again, as a facilitator, I want all, everybody to see the cards with, with uh, gratitude in it. Again, I can open it so that I don't have to ask them, find the word gratitude, click on it, and it's going to display the card. So I have all these little controls to be in control myself. And this is why with Storm, you can do some large groups. You can have 200 participants in a room, no problem because of this kind of system or even online. Um, and yeah, there is a, you can modify the size. You can do some stuff like that. Uh, the number of words that you can show, you can limit the number of words that you show. Uh, it's a little bit smart, little bit. Here, I specify the locale. If I didn't specify lo your locale, you would have had a very different results because it removes the small words and stuff like that. So right now, it's called stemming. That's the te technical way. It's only available in English and French. Oh, by the way, Marta, do you facilitate a workshop in German? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the time, actually. OK. Yeah. Um, right now, Storms is available in five different languages, uh, French, English, uh, Spanish, um, German, and Russian. Well. Uh, but for the new version, uh, we have a problem because we don't have our German translator anymore. So if you want to write it in German, <laughs> you can help. <laughs> yeah, because our translations are, are done by our community. Your translation, if you get the, the, the last Are part, done by the community said? of users. Okay. Are done by our community of users. We do the French because we can. We do the English because we think we can, but we make it read by <laughs> others. <laughs> <laughs> and Spanish, Span okay. Spanish is done by Hector. You know Hector, it is. Ah, Hector Villarreal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, no? Yeah. Yeah. Hector Villarreal, see. Uh, Russian is done by, um, uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it because of the context. Mm -hmm. uh, and German, right now, I have no one, so we'll see. Uh, and this is basically. Oh, yeah, just one last feature. I'm going to show you that on another workshop. I think I have it on the brainstorming. We uh, need to get hooked they're... into Miriam's community. She has a lot of German facilitators in her community. Mm -hmm. OK. So, yeah, it's not, it's not a free community. Uh, it's not like ours, I, but um, it's probably worth Germany it is one of my smallest uh, country. Uh, we have a lot of users in um, 50% from uh, US and Canada, 30% mm -hmm. uh, in France. I don't know why. And uh, a little bit in South uh, America, L uh, a lot in, in England too, and very few Germany, Spain, Spain etc. So yeah, I wanted to show you, um, it's, it's the first iteration of this feature. It didn't exist before. You can save your PowerPoint as uh, images and then import it, import the images in Storms directly so that if you want to show a slide or an image, just do that and it's going to show on the screen of the participants. Uh, and also you can make them available. Let's say, for example, they have to work in breakouts 
and uh, you have some very technical documents that you want them to have available. So what I would do here is I want put it, I will share with them. And that when I share, they have a new button here. And this button is a way to get access to all the shared slides so that they can access it at any time um, when they are doing their work. And they can click on it to see it in big and say, et cetera. So it may, when they work in breakouts or when you have some instructions that are very dense and very visual, you can use that and put them in the, in the portfolio like that. Right now, only images. Mm -hmm. Voila. That's all I mm. wanted to show you. What do you think? Pluses, minuses, surprises. Yeah, yeah, really nice. If it was interactive, we could do that. We could. <laughs> I mean, rem yeah, remember, yeah. <laughs> remember in the old, the, the other version or, or the version I I knew, I don't know, like five years ago or something like that, six years ago. I think it's much more better, really. It's much more usability. <laughs> or, yes, but but I see you. You are still thinking about synchronous remote workshop would be your main. Well, uh, you can do you can do you can do everything, but so you can do synchronous, you can do asynchronous, you can do remote, you can do in person. Yeah. But from a marketing perspective, it's very difficult to convince people to use a tool in person, mm -hmm. even if we do that every week and it works great and it gives a lot of productivity in the room, but there is a huge blocker in the facilitation uh, community about using digital tools for in-person meetings. Um, by the way, my facilitation agency is called High Low because what we want we, to demonstrate is that a digital tool is just another tool in your um, um, toolbox yeah, well. and we love to mix both. And this is what gives the best experience. So uh, Storms has a place for in-person, but we don't really market it because uh, we have to focus on the best use case. Uh, we are a small team. We don't do marketing. So when we do a little bit of marketing, we have to be really focused. But you can do synchronous, asynchronous too. I mean, you can for, give for a me, link. It could, be, it could be for some clusters to do it asynchronous. Yeah. Could be a... Uh, uh, hybrid, hybrid too. You do a remote meeting, you do the brainstorming uh, during 20 minutes, then you close the meeting and you tell them you have one week to comment, to vote, uh, mm -hmm. to do stuff, and then you reconvene uh, all of them for another synchronous meeting. You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. The deal works uh, in all settings. And prices? Oh, okay. Oh, pricing, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Elise, is it possible to cut that part from the recording? Uh, because the pricing, the pricing part? is not public yet. <laughs> so, uh, let me show again the PowerPoint. <clears throat> so, uh, if you, by looking at uh, this demo, you want to get access to uh, the new version, my suggestion is that you subscribe here on this URL and uh, also send me an email by uh, telling me I was at the demo with Elise um, because I think we're going to open the gates mid-October, okay? Uh, first of all, we're going to open it to our power users, the persons that supported us since 10 years, and uh, we're going to do a specific workshop. They're going to be able to give feedback because they know the tool very well. And then we're going to open the gates uh, wave by wave. Uh, so my, uh, my promise to, to you is that if some of you, uh, as you have assisted to this webinar, send me an email and you will be in the first wave after the power users. So mid-October, 
October, somewhere in October. So that's for the access to the features. And for the access to the pricing, the pricing is going to be coded after uh, we release the beta. So it's going to be somewhere in November, December. Uh, somewhere in November, December. And, um, and again, if uh, I can make some exceptions for just for you guys, you can send me an email and tell me, Alex, I would like to try and can I, can you do something for me? Generally, I say yes. Thank you. <laughs> so Alex, I have a question, technical question. Um, will yeah. we, uh, is your API changing? Because we have an integration between your platform and our platform. Do I need to, <laughs> Do I need a heads up so that we can? So it's mainly a, a front end project. So the API, cool. uh, the API is, remains mainly the same. Uh, we have to do a little bit of um, cleaning, I guess, but um, the API remains mainly the same. Yeah. Um, so did you like it? Uh, what, what's your thinking? Do, do you see this as a complement to a tool like Miro, for example? Mm -hmm. I I would probably use this instead of Mural. I, I oh. use Mural all the time. <laughs> um, it, and and the, the question is an old facilitator uh, using virtual is like, is it worth the learning curve to go here? That is the big question. And it, it does make it a lot easier than Mural. Definitely. It, uh, I do a lot of strategic planning mm. uh, ideation. Mm. And and yeah, I, I think this might be superior to it. Um, how much? I'm not sure. Mm. Mm. I can tell you because I use both uh, in the context of my agencies that uh, when I have first time participants with Miro, I plan at least a 50 minutes or 20 minutes uh, activity for them to get used to zooming, panning and stuff like that. Uh, with Storms, I... I plan three minutes. Yeah, that's great. What about documentation? How about uh, 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 specifically the output documentation? Oh yeah, um, you can export. Oh, that's also one of the strong points uh, because uh, everything you export is, uh, you can export it in a Word or an Excel file. And for example, the Excel file is very structured. I mean, You've seen, the, for example, you have a title of the idea, and then you have all the pros, and then all the cons, and then you have the name of a person, and then you have the average rating and the standard deviation on the criteria number one. So you have everything that is very, very detailed. You have a, a sheet which is global. You have a sheet by user, so you can know exactly what each user has contributed in terms of uh, cards, uh, votes, multiple criteria, everything, you have everything. And it's structured already. So you just have to, to do a little bit of fine tuning for the layout and the colors, and then you can send it to your customer 15 minutes after the, the session and you're gonna be a hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, in my own programs, I also use Miro and I, and I use group map more. But yeah, mm. This looks really super awesome. So, you know, might be switching that up, but uh, <laughs> but si similar kinds of things. Like I'll use Miro with facilitators, design thinkers. Of course. You yeah. know, uh, anybody who's in that world already. Um, and I will never use it with a client. I just, I never do because it takes me way too long and it, it wastes my time and I can't get the data out in a way that I can then turn it over to whoever paid me for results. Well, one of the difficult so. thing also with a, a whiteboard application is when you have a lot of people, it's really a nightmare when people start adding post-it notes all over the screen yeah. and you have to to clean them um, and and to, yeah. to move them live. And sometimes you have to be two to be able to do that. So when you have too many participants, it's very difficult. When you have five or six, Miro, and I again, I use them and I love both tools and I think that 
the use cases are different. If you want to do diagramming, if you want to show relationships between ideas. Uh, I like it to present, present too. It's kind of fun if you do the like progressive reveal and move them yeah. from thing to thing. It looks great. The other thing is that you spend much more time designing your board if you want it to look it great. Uh, <laughs> I spend so much time because I'm a, I have a problem. If two things are, if there's a little shift between two things, it's a problem for me. So I spend so much time having this right size of um, fonts and putting that aligned with another one. And then you have to block everything to make sure that they don't mess up with your design. So, so this is a drawback. It's cool because at the end you have something great visually, but you don't have at all this kind of preparation to do with storms. I can, once you are used to the tool, you build your, you know your, so first of all, you do your design, okay, without the tool. And then once you know your design, you create the steps and I can create a workshop in 15 minutes, maybe even 10 minutes, I think. Well, I've used it for 10 years, so, okay. But uh, if you think your design before and you know the, the, the feature of storms quite well, it's very fast. At the beginning, of course, it will take a little bit more time because you don't know, can I use that or that, how it looks like. So you will do some testing and learning. Oh, well, thank you for the link. Thank you. Yeah. So don't hesitate to subscribe and send me an email. I'm going to give you my, my personal email. Well, my uh, Storm's email. I, I I subscribe to your list for early access. Yeah. Is that sufficient? Well, I won't know, maybe from the date, but I won't know that uh, you that you are from this specific session. I won't remember, uh, I guess. Uh, so it's easiest for me uh, so that I can already tag you for the first, first wave. Mm -hmm. Because it was uh, my promise and I need to... Keep How do you say promises. that in English? <laughs> Fulfill the promise? How do you say Can that? You swear. <laughs> yeah. So, Alexandre. But, Alexandre, you are French, yeah. no? Yes, I am. Family, you are, your accent is clearly French, but you have a yeah. stutter. It's Eisenstetter, no, it's not really French, right? <laughs> oh, it's an avatar. It's it's, an avatar uh, it, it was uh, Austrian, but 200 years Austrian. ago. Okay. It was hunger, uh, the empire, Austrian empire. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. At first, I, I, I tried to remove my French accent, but I really cannot. It's impossible. And now it's <laughs> part of my signature. So. <laughs> so. Any so other Alex, feedback? This is super cool. Um, for the people who tend who watch this later, who are not facilitators but are technologists looking to work in the in make meeting software go that will say, solve the world's problems, what is it that keeps you going ten years, ten plus years into this? Uh, well, it's it's easy for for, for me. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I have how to say that. It's like a sandbox. This company for me is like a sandbox. I, I do all the things that I like. I love the facilitation. That's why I still have this agency. Uh, I love designing workshops. And I love the tool and I love coding. <laughs> so it's really all the things I love. So I can work on Sunday. It's not a problem for me. Yeah. Sunday morning early because then it's going to be a problem for my wife. But um, yeah, it's all the things that I love and it's it's seeing, I really like before when I was at 3M, I was changing job every two years and not really have the time to specialize. So I'm really happy to be an expert right now at what I'm doing. And in this new version of Storms, we tried to put everything we learned. Uh, before we were doing small improvements but here we said, okay, now we need to stop. We need to really rethink the interface. And 
it's been two years. It's very long. Uh, for someone like me, it's very frustrating to, to, to wait so long for delivering that. But I think it was worth the wait because I really love this. Uh, this so this is what makes me keep uh, doing is I have 1,000 things on my to-do list that I want uh, to do after that for Storm. So. Cool. Oh, by, by the way, I have a quick question. Um, I'm wondering if we don't have any integration with Zoom or Microsoft Teams meetings or stuff like that, how important is it for you to have this kind of integration? I, I don't use the Miro integration. Uh, it's not important at all for me. OK. That's surprising. I thought that the general consensus was that it was important. I'm not a general consensus. Uh, <laughs> not in the general realm. <laughs> me neither. We have that, but either way, you have still everything. If if you put it inside Teams, then you put away the things that you could show inside Teams besides the board mm. that that you use. So. It's not that I don't use it that much inside uh, Teams. Okay. What about mm -hmm. you, Susanna? No, neither me also. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might want to change my priorities for after that. Like that. No, maybe because it's more simple. Yeah, my my thought was if we want to me. provide the most seamless experience possible, it might be important for us to do it. But it's it's not it's very very simple. So I will have to to ask my community about that. Well, it, 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 it's a good thing to do regardless because it's also a marketing element mm. to that. Mm. Uh, people who use Miro will learn. I mean, Zoom will learn more about your offering if you did that. Mm. Well, if I'm on top of the sure. app library, because if you're in the depth of the library, no one will see you. We 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 invested a huge amount in a Microsoft integration and um, saw like nothing from that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of market awareness, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, yay and yay features, um, but but you can't mm -hmm. ever recoup the investment in those features unless you mm -hmm. truly drive something big. We are at the end of our official time today. Thank you so hey. much, yeah. Alex, for sharing your your baby with us. That, yeah. is, that is a wonderful trust you've given us to see something this, this uh, <laughs> newborn. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for showing up and providing feedback. And Yeah, thank you very much. That was awesome. No, welcome. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. 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 Feel free. You have my email address. Feel free to, uh, to to call me whenever you want. And thanks a lot, Elise, for the invitation. Yeah, I think it. I think this is an important part of how we do what we do, right? Like understanding what's possible is is pretty cool, and getting feedback on that. So, uh, I really appreciate appreciate you all. Thank you so much for being here. So, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Be well. Bye.